Previously, we explored the intriguing possibility that the Dome of the Rock might actually be Solomon's temple, supported by evidence from various historical maps and drawings. Some of these maps, dating as far back as the 1100s, show a structure resembling the Dome of the Rock, often labeled as the Temple of Solomon. This challenges the widely accepted belief that Solomon's temple was destroyed long ago, leaving only vague remnants. We then examined an 1887 drawing of Jerusalem, where the Dome of the Rock is labeled as the Palace of Kings, suggesting that historical narratives may have shifted over time. Perhaps the current dome is just the top portion of a much larger, buried structure, potentially the original temple. If true, this idea could reshape our understanding of one of the world's most significant religious sites, revealing that Solomon's temple may have been hiding in plain sight all along. We also explored the fascinating legend surrounding Solomon and his temple. It is said that Solomon's wealth surpassed that of all other kings, amassing 666 talents of gold annually. The Bible and apocryphal texts attribute him with magical artifacts like the Ark of the Covenant and a flying carpet. He was also believed to possess a ring, gifted by the Archangel Michael, enabling him to command demons to build his temple. Whether these tales are true or not, influential groups seem to believe them. Why else would Solomon's temple play a central role in Freemasonic rituals, with lodges modeled after it? Some Masonic texts even claim that rebuilding the temple is key to world peace. Archaeological digs around Jerusalem are tantalizing, particularly near the Gihon Spring, just outside Solomon's Temple. Excavations at the Al-Aqsa Mosque in 1938 unearthed Byzantine and Greek structures. More digs took place near the Temple Mount, but nothing conclusive about Solomon's treasure has been revealed. Underground tunnels in Jerusalem may hold clues, and I once walked through one without realizing I might have been in the preserved halls of Solomon's Temple. These hidden tunnels may connect to the Holy of Holies, believed by some to be the true center of the earth. Could the Ark still lie beneath it? Anyway, this is part 3 of the series, the final part. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous videos, the links are in the description. I recommend watching them all, to get the full picture. I hope you don't get bored. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Here we see a 1643 map of Jerusalem. At the time, it was not labeled fictitious. But, modern academics say it's imaginary, because it doesn't fit to their timeline. This print is labeled 16th century. Its German title says, Jerusalem, the holy square city. The caption in front of the arched entrance, says Tempelahef, which means temple courtyard. Where we expect to find the holy of holies, it says temple, and we again see the dome structure. How much more evidence do you need? The drawings raise another urgent question. Was Solomon's reign much more recent than we are told? This is a 1670 map by Roman de Huga. None of these maps say, hi this is a mythical fictitious made up map. They just say map of Jerusalem. It's just people sitting down and drawing what they see. I like this one because it shows the big rock below the temple. This is a 1472 map of Jerusalem. The temple here, again, looks like the Dome of the Rock. I guess it wasn't destroyed thousands of years ago. At least not its second version. Here's a 1321 map of Jerusalem featuring Domus Alamanus. Here is a 1475 map of Jerusalem. Solomon's temple has the crescent at the top. But it's still indicated as Solomon's temple. 1578. This is the DPR map of the 1700s. The Dome of the Rock equals Solomon's Temple. And why is there a crescent moon on many of these Solomonic temples? Even a Crusader map of Jerusalem from the 1100s shows the temple and delineates it as such. The ancients had no doubt what and where Solomon's Temple was. They retained their knowledge for hundreds of years. Maps from the 1200s agree with maps from the 1700s. Modernists have all kinds of doubts about where it is, from when it is and who built it. With all these maps in mind, let's look at the Wikipedia page on Solomon's Temple. I've highlighted the relevant statements. Solomon's Temple, also known as the First Temple, is believed to have existed in Jerusalem between the 10th and 6th centuries BC. 
Its description is primarily based on the Hebrew Bible, which narrates that King Solomon commissioned its construction before it was destroyed in 587 BC, during the siege by Nebuchadnezzar II of the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Although no remains of the temple have ever been found, most modern scholars agree that the first temple likely stood on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem by the time of the Babylonian siege, though there is significant debate about the date of its construction and the identity of its builder. The Hebrew Bible, particularly in the Book of Kings, provides a detailed account of its construction, ordered by Solomon. The temple served as a religious center for the Israelites and housed the Ark of the Covenant in the innermost chamber, known as the Holy of Holies. Only the high priest of Israel was permitted to enter the sacred area on Yom Kippur, bearing the blood of a sacrificial lamb and burning incense. The destruction of the first temple and the subsequent Babylonian exile were seen as fulfillments of biblical prophecies, affecting Jewish religious beliefs and strengthening monotheism. In the 1980s, scholars became more skeptical of the biblical narrative, questioning whether any temple existed in Jerusalem as early as the 10th century BC. No direct evidence for the existence of Solomon's temple has been found, and recent archaeological excavations on the Temple Mount are limited due to extreme political and religious sensitivities. Excavations in the 19th and early 20th centuries did not identify even a trace of the temple complex. They really want you to know that no temple has ever been found and keep repeating it. It's a simple illusionist trick. They claimed it's been gone since thousands of years. Because you believe it's long gone, you never look for it. But if you acknowledge that it's been right there, in front of us all along, that brings a tale of problems along with it. It means that Solomon existed. And if Solomon is not a fairy tale, as modern academia tells us, it lends credibility to a whole lot of other things related to Judaism, Christianity and Islam. It means that the timelines are false, because we see the temple intact in medieval times, and even until the 1700s. It means there's been a mud flood. It means Jews, Christians, and Muslims have been lied to. It means there is a lot of gold and silver waiting to be dug out. It could mean there are technologically advanced or supernatural gadgets waiting to be dug out. This video only scratches the surface, pun intended. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.